standard or NEMA 5-20 or 20 amp, um, uh, 120 volt AC. But it was also at level two, supposed to do 240 volts yeah, AC yeah. up to 80 amperes. We have that's, kind of light cable, and I've done a little looking into it and found out why Underwriters Laboratories has, uh, they have uh, their documents. And uh, in fact, I've got the, uh, they list in the spec, the critical one, UL2594, Outline of Investigation Electric Vehicle Supply Equipment. They did approve the J1772 connector up to 30 amps. All right. So we've got a 15 and a 30. So we've got an 80 amp standard. Yep. Uh, that's good up to 30 amps. And our wiring is good up to 30 amps. For most cars, uh, that's sufficient. If you have mm -hmm. a Tesla, it's probably not going to cover it. Um, uh, our Mini, it would be a stretch. Uh, yeah, it it'll would be. Work, yeah. It'll yeah. work with the onboard charger we have, um, but it would be a long charge. In any event, I thought we'd go over the spec a little bit and the uh, connector. The connector is um, kind of interesting, I think. It, it, this is really, going through the spec, this has been done right. It's a very safe uh, situation and a fairly intelligent one. I'm kind of impressed. You plug in the charge connector. It has a button and a latch, and that's actually an electrical switch we'll talk about here in a few minutes. And it has five pins, um, pin one, uh, upper right, big pin, is uh, L1. That's your either your power on the 120-volt um, AC or your L1 phase on the 240. Uh, pin two, right next to it, would be your neutral on the 120 or right. L2 on the um, uh, 248 AC. Um, pin three at the bottom is a ground pin and it protrudes farther than the other pins. So when you plug it in, the first thing first that goes in is the ground. Hit the ground. Um, pin four on the uh, lower right hand side as you face the connector is your proximity uh, d detection pin. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. Right. And then uh, pin five is a control pilot signal. And we're gonna talk a lot about that. Um, the um, little inlet, of course, has the corresponding pins. But there's a little latch, you flip that and it opens up. It has a little catch here. The um, connector slides in and this uh, latch engages and that, uh, if you'll notice, pops that switch. Um, it actually closes a switch S3, which is uh, part of the proximity detection. Again, that is on uh, pin four here. Let's talk a little bit about proximity detection. This is uh, kind of a, it's mostly for the car's benefit. Um, okay. If that switch is in the proper position, uh, there's uh, some resistors on the, um, um, they're calling this um, electric vehicle support equipment side, which oh, is your charger, charger, which is what yeah. this is on. A couple of resistors. Normally, you'd have a 5-volt supply on the uh, car side and maybe a resistor, and it would route through this pin to the SAE by monitoring that 5-volt level across that resistor tree in that switch. You would be able to detect that you have been plugged into um, by in a, a um, uh, EV SMB, an okay. electric vehicle support equipment, supply equipment. And what the uh, car should do in that case is uh, disable your controller, uh, open okay. the, the link to your contactor, and uh, start your charger. All right, that's why you plugged in. And uh, so that's proximity detection. In the event that somebody pushes this button, that opens switch S3, and the car should do a, um, a quick but orderly shutdown of the charger so okay. that when you pull the mm, connector out, it doesn't draw an arc. All right. And that's, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty cool. That's cool. The, um, that's the proximity detection. It's uh, 
uh, fairly simple, and they, they most of the uh, intelligence in here is done in this way, by monitoring voltage levels applied across various resistances. And uh, I thought that was uh, pretty interesting. By far, most of the uh, intelligence is uh, in this control pilot signal on pin 5. Oh, pin 5, all right. Pin 5 connects to the charger. The charger must do these things or power never comes out of the controller. So if you thought you were going to use this just with a little adapter to a uh, <laughs> uh, NEMA 550, yeah. it's a little more advanced than that. You're going to have Can't to run your hair dryer circuitry in your car or oh, power right. never comes on. Um, now the basic um, situation that this looks for is it puts out a 12 volt signal and measures um, measures that level uh, through some resistors in, in the car. Your basic 2.74K resistor and um, a diode would indicate a car is there. Car's there, all right. But then it's gonna look for some state information. This is kind of cool. It, your charger should then switch in um, either an 882 ohm load in, uh, by putting another resistor in parallel with mm -hmm. the 2.74 or a 246 ohm. And if it does the 882 ohms, it means it's ready to accept a charge and no ventilation is required. Okay. All right. If it switches in a 246 ohm thing, it says it's ready, but it requires ventilation. Now, why would it require ventilation, do you imagine? Must be warm. No, it's primarily a function of uh, this lead acid batteries that we're never going to get away from. Oh, you mean real sulfur? They give, they give uh, off right. hydrogen. Right. And, hydrogen. So, forth. and ah. so uh, this, the standard <laughs> riders want a way um, mm. for the car to indicate that it requires ventilation if it's indoors uh, for charging. For lead acid batteries. Now, yeah. if it if you do indicate 204, this is not going to be used very much. I don't think. No. If you do huh. indicate with a 246 ohm load in the diode that you're ready but need ventilation, then if the EVSE doesn't have ventilation, it simply shuts down and refuses to give you any power. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> but a little tricky. If, if it can provide ventilation, it turns on the fan. Okay. And then continues. And that that's um, kind of the various states. Um, when it's open, this isn't connected. There is no power on the pins. You, it if hasn't, you can drop it right. in a bucket of water, there's not going to be anything grave happen um, other than um, perhaps a 12 volt uh, signal. Um, but there's no power on the pins at all, and there won't be until the charger talks to it a little bit uh, by varying these impedances. When it does that, uh, what the um, charger's gonna do is put out a um, change from a 12 volt uh, constant signal to a 12 volt oscillator, a one kilohertz square wave. All right. And as we've discussed so, many times, talking. pulse width modulation, mm -hmm. well, they're doing it again. Uh, <laughs> and this is a pulse width modulated square wave, 12 volts. Um, so 12 volts is applied, again, it depends on this impedance, right. what the actual level that will be felt um, is. Um, it's kind of interesting if it um, has a duty cycle, less than 8%, I'll say. Uh, that indicates that it wants to have a digital conversation. All right. Okay. Um, now, the so, car can't really have no. a digital conversation, neither can the charger right now. This is for future expansion. Um, but what that's going to be for is for level three charging, which will be a different, different connector different anyway. Connector, yeah. so, but it's part of the standard um, that the control pilot signal would um, ask for a digital uh, conversation to exchange data, uh, potentially for something like a, a DC uh, connection at much higher, much higher voltage yeah. levels. Yeah. If it's um, over 10%, 
the um, percentage of modulation is how the um, EVSE, the support equipment, uh, indicates the car how much current is available. This is That's kind of a neat That's, concept. Yeah. Um, up to 85%, uh, it's simply um, a, a formula 0 0.6 times the duty cycle. So if you have a 20% duty cycle, um, that's um, uh, times 0.6 is 12 amps. 12, 